What's up, y'all? <clears throat> so, I was on I was on Twitter and Coach Malachi popped up, right? So I figured I'd give it a little gander and listen to it, right? Uh, he's talking about <laughs> Edward fucking Hearn and shit like that and why motherfuckers is, uh, you know, mad at him and stuff like that. And nothing with him being the new Jack Swing, the new Jack... The new dude on the block and shit like that. What had happened, what, what, what the problem was, nobody taught that nigga how to squabble. That's what it was. That's exactly what the fuck it was. And now what you're saying is, when Edward Hearn came up over here, he was bitching and hollering about how these promoters over here overpaying fighters and shit like that. Now all of a sudden, that's what he's doing, but he's doing it on the front end. And the reason why they're doing it on the front end, because a lot of times there's some sports washing going on, and the zone needs to make a mark for themselves. So that's the reason why there's a lot of front end money right now with the zone and these Saudi Arabia and these other motherfucking deals. It ain't because they have the money, it's because they need tourism. Saudi Arabia put a post out a couple of years ago talking about they putting uh one billion dollars or whatever how much into uh tourism. Right? Edward Hearn just said that Anthony Joshua is not, is not uh, signed to this the zone deal when it comes to this Alexander Usyk fight up over in the Middle East. They have the global broadcasting rights, right? And you know why they got that shit? The reason why they got that shit is because how the hell are they going to give all that money up and they give all these niggas all the, all the goddamn rights? How are you going to give somebody $80 million and then give them all the publishing? Hmm. Give them all the motherfucker points, right? So that's what's happening right now. And Edward said also that that's the reason why you know um, things ain't really been announced right now because Saudi Arabia or whoever, it, whatever uh, the Middle East country is, is no slight to them. I'm just saying it's like just in case I get it wrong, is um, actively looking for people that want to buy the rights to pay to, to pay for the fight globally not just one country all of these motherfuckers right so you know the history of edward hearn in the u.s um he started it all you know um you know the the, the phrase is humble and and uh being a good person and all this stuff when it comes to these boxers with and these promoters were watching them outside the ring you know People weren't really doing that with Edward Hearn. You know what I'm saying? And now look, he's in the predicament that he's in because, first of all, he had bad deals with people. First, and then he came over here running his mouth. These promoters are not mad at him before being the new guy on the street. And if you actually think about it, the new guy on the street was another hindrance to why fights didn't happen and why fights still not happening. We already had too many broadcasters. We already had too many streaming apps. So why do we need another one, right? Why do we need another one up over here? Why does Edward Hearn believe he has the remedy? He didn't believe he had the remedy. The whole thing was about him making money. And that's what it was. The whole thing was about making money. Nobody's coming up over here to America to, to so-called, like Edward Hearn said, make boxing great again. People were coming up over here to make fucking money, to make a name for themselves, to make legacy for themselves and their family, to make a nest egg for themselves and their family. I.e. Box, uh, Matchroom Boxing USA, i.e. The Zone USA. Had nothing to do with all that. He thought he had the remedy. Another guy thought he had the remedy for the sickness of boxing was Dana White. He thought he had the cure. And then what Dana White said, he got in. And then a couple months or a year later, he was out and said, it's too chaotic for him. It's too chaotic for him. It wasn't too chaotic for him. He didn't, he, he didn't know how to get in where he fit in. Teach a boy how to squabble. This is, all this shit is just is, 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 is business. It ain't got anything to do with motherfuckers' feelings. And if people start getting out of their feelings and start going with things that they believe in and what they, or what they want things, how they want things to be, then it would get a bigger overall picture. 
You know what I'm saying? You know, you could everybody could come out here and say there's some tight break fighters that's that's being protected, or if they ain't being protected, they're getting a better look than other fighters. And then uh PBC fighters is these fighters that's being protected and this and the third. What you have to understand is is that you can't just throw your fighters out there. If like like Tay Jones said, if motherfuckers really left it up to YouTubers to control somebody's motherfucking career, they would have ran a fighter into the motherfucking ground. You could talk bad about Tank Davis and everything. You know what I'm saying? Uh, I have plenty of discussions on my channel about that dude. And yeah, he, he, yeah, it's about time for him to step up. But at the same time is you can literally see that they built in the bad man. And if you can't, and if you can't agree with that, then I, if you can't see that, I don't know what to tell you. That's just my opinion with it, though, but it's not a fact. But it appears that they're building a, a bad motherfucker inside the ring and outside the ring. A lot of you motherfuckers with Tate Davis talking about he's immature, he's this and the third, blah, 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 bringing up habits out in the club and alcohol and fist fights and women issues and stuff like that. So why would you just put that dude up in there? That you know that you're trying to get them somewhere. You're trying to get them to see the overall picture. And now it kind of look like that motherfucker sees the overall picture. He literally sees that that if he stops being the person that everybody on that don't mean a damn on YouTube was talking about him. And he puts more effort in what he was doing. He could be whatever he wants to in boxing, right? It's not up for us to, to see it. It's not up for the people in his corners. It's, it's for him to get it. And now look at him. Where, where's the talk about this stuff with Anthony Joshua? 17 fights and all this other thing. All that fictitious ass shit that they made and they surrounded with him throughout the media and all this stuff. And then all of a sudden he took a, he took two L's. And now motherfuckers is jump ship and stuff like that. They lost confidence in with him. And now they, now look. And now look, Anthony Joshua, Anthony Joshua and Canelo is the only thing the motherfuckers got. And, and, and somebody about to lose another O. I mean, I'm not going to lose another O. Somebody about to have another L. And if y'all if motherfuckers can't see that shit, I don't know what to tell you. All this boxing stuff is a gamble, but why would you, as a promoter or a manager, try to gamble all your shit all the way just because some fucking fans on the internet is mad and shit. They ain't about to do that shit. Edward Hearn keep calling his fighters domestic. Some, uh, some of these guys up over there in the UK domestic level fighters and shit like that. But the thing about it is when you call them people domestic level fighters. You know they ain't, they ain't about. They, they ain't gonna mount shit on the international level. So why do you keep doing that? And then why do you keep selling people those type of shows? Huh? Where was all that energy with Edward Hearn when it came to Rocky Fielding? Edward Hearn was like, Rocky Fielding's about to whoop that ass. And what happened with that? But when it comes to Anthony Yard, it's a whole nother ball game with Demetrius Bivol. You know, at the end of you, 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 you know what I'm saying? Whether or not you're a promoter or not, you know, you should always stay positive and neutral with these guys because at the end of the day, you help them out to feed they flame. They help you out to feed your fire because... At some point, some somebody's gonna have to fight one of your fighters, and you dogging everybody. And damn for sure, ain't gonna help it. That's the reason why motherfuckers don't like his ass. He runs his mouth, and he, he he's he's what, what what they say. What uh, Charlie Murphy say? He's a habitual line stepper. He's a habitual line stepper, and he ain't had his ass beat in a minute. Mm hmm. That's the that's the motherfucking problem, you know, and he's already been showed up a few times with this whole his own thing. He already had to tuck his tail a few times with his, his own thing. It ain't really got nothing to do with people just beat him to the punch. They just be beating him to the punch. He thought he, he came up over here as a know it all and everything. And he found out everything wasn't just about money. You know what I'm saying? They got something over here called credit. Your credit ain't good with everybody. You you the new dude on the street with a whole bunch of money, but people want to see how much how long you gonna last. 
These investors want to know how long you're going to last. Is it going to be a dud? Is it, is, 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 are we going to lose money? Nobody want to spend money and then lose money. Come on, man. Come on. Yeah, they got all that money to spend up over there in Saudi Arabia, but they, 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 people's, people's, people's reputations on the line, whether or not it's going to be a success or not. Somebody had to approve that shit, right? And say, yeah, this is a good lucrative thing to bring, to bring uh, tourism up over here and taxes and we can recruit from the international um, broadcasting rights and this and the third. Somebody had to stamp this. Somebody's neck is on the line. Um, well, I don't know. They they neck is really on the line, but over there in Saudi Arabia. But you know what I'm saying. Somebody's credit is on the line, and then now now what you now what you're seeing is anybody out there, right? That's making videos, gaslighting for a motherfucker promoter. Gaslighting for a motherfucker promoter. I don't want to hear it. I ain't gaslighting for none of these motherfuckers. I ain't gaslighting for none of these motherfuckers. I know PBC. Their agenda, right? Their agenda for what I've been seeing ain't about motherfucking uh, giving us the fights that we want to see. It's all about putting their fighters first, putting their fighters first, and trying to build their fighters up and get them to exit the most amount of money they could they could possibly give them. You know what I'm saying? I don't. I, and and it's, that's what I see. Matchroom boxing, try to fast track all these fighters and try to, you know, use uh, analytics and all this stuff to to uh, use social media to try to boost them up, to try to make them look good and stuff like that. And it ain't been working. It works over there in the UK, but even people over there in the UK know know what they all about. They they know once they hit the international streets, that it's about a matter of time that one of them get knocked out because they don't spend no time into developing their fighters properly they don't spend no time over there in the uk with developing their pr fighters properly it's, it's, it's quick money quick fast money let's fill this try to fill these stadiums up give people a fight every weekend without building no motherfucking fighters if everybody fighting the fucking is damn near everybody fighting the same out of the uk then what, what, what's 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 the what is the end result of that when everybody know how they fight. You know what I'm saying? So let's 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 just cut that out, man. Let's just cut that out. You you, you know, we we seen him come and go. We seen we seen Anthony Joshua, we seen Josh Taylor, we seen Rocky Fielding, we seen uh a whole bunch of them come up over here and get their ass whooped. We seen a whole bunch of them uh even even over there in the UK get their ass whooped by somebody that they wasn't supposed to get their ass whooped from. So go and miss me that. They don't know how to build fighters. And we're not talking about guys that started at 18. We, I'm talking about guys that that started in their early teens and shit like that and have a whole bunch of amateur fights and stuff like that. Then all of a sudden, they Edward Hearn burns them out. He don't know how to build fighters. You know, or if he don't know how to build, well, you know what? A lot of, you know, it's not it's not it's not his job to build the fighters, but as a as a, in a situation like that, you know, and you have insight with things and stuff like that, and business is involved, it is your job to your uh it is it is your job to step up and 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 give your motherfucking two cents. You know what I'm saying? He, he you know, especially when you go on over here, you're talking about other fighters and what they will amount to and stuff like that. So, you know, you can't tell me that. He's not telling people on training camps and stuff like that and what they're doing and, and paying attention, especially when there's, there's money involved. You know what I'm saying? So you can you, you folks can go and miss me with that, you know, about all that stuff. And he keeps having fighters leave. You know what I'm saying? Leave, leave him. You know, I'm surprised Anthony Joshua stayed that long because Anthony Joshua didn't need matchroom boxing. Uh to get where he was, especially with his one, two, three uh, investments and all this other stuff. He's, you know, he's pretty much um, already a household name uh, and don't need nobody's um, permission to make these fights and stuff like that. But it's all, you know, it's just all of it, man. It's just a bunch of BS to me. It's a bunch of whole bunch of smoke and mirrors and 
like I said, I was watching the Coach Malachi thing. I can't really get past it, man, because I just can't stand and listen to that shit all damn day about somebody hooting and hollering about a damn promoter and you ain't getting the fights that you want to see. You know what I'm saying? That's like me sitting up over here talking about some sign the contract Crawford and and or give 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 Crawford what he wanted and y'all meet meet at the even with Spence and all that shit is just kind of like uh, uh, Stockholm syndrome, man. That's what it reminds me of Stockholm syndrome. You know, the fuck I look like arguing with a bunch of motherfuckers on the internet about which promoter is the best and and which fighter is ducking and shit like that when. Especially when you ain't got nothing out there besides besides two fighters saying that no neither side is ducking. Especially when you got two sides over on the thing saying neither fight, neither side is ducking. The business, 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 all this business ass shit. I ain't trying to hear that shit. As a fight fan, I ain't trying to hear none of that shit about no motherfucking business. At this point, especially with no Crawford and Spence. You know, how bad do you guys really want this motherfucker? You know, and some and and uh, you know, me and a couple of guys went back and forth with that shit because I'm like they both ducking in my eyes. Motherfucker gonna get mad. I don't give a fuck. How many times we gotta keep talking about this Crawford and Spence shit? You know what I'm saying? Crawford and Spence shit, Crawford and Spence shit before motherfuckers start really looking at both of these guys and saying, either you make the fight or not. And then you guys gonna then if they don't make the fight, you motherfuckers still gonna pay for their pay per views and shit like that, and buy their fights and shit like that. Buy the, you, you know it's just it's, it's, it's like Stockholm syndrome. These niggas don't want to give you what you want. Then why the fuck you watch it? You got you got at some point at some point yeah we all boxing fans and stuff like that, but at some point we got to draw the line to put our motherfucking foot down. You know what I'm saying? Teach your niggas how to squabble. You know what I'm saying? Because what they going to say, oh, X amount of gay. What they going to say, oh, he did X amount of viewer, view, viewership without Crawford and this and the third, without Spence and whoop de whoop whoop. This is the reason why they should have, this is what's going to happen in the future. This is the reason why motherfuckers should have made the fight because uh, this and the third. But you got to understand is that it, this fight does not stop the growth of their career. This fight is not the biggest fight of their fucking career. It is not. It is not. This is the catalyst. This is the catalyst to, to where they can get somewhere else. You know what I'm saying? But at the same time, is they got to use their mouthpiece, too, and they got to do their own thing to uh, let people to gravitate to them. The same thing with Tank Davis. The same thing with um, Josh Taylor. The same thing with a lot of these fighters. You know, at some point, you got to put your dues in. I don't think none of the, a lot of these niggas ain't putting no dues in. A lot of these motherfuckers ain't putting no dues in, man. They ain't putting enough dues in. To where they could come out here and fight whoever the fuck they want to and 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 have a good consensus on they they had a good run, give them a break. None of these motherfuckers put no dudes in, man. None of these motherfuckers out the gate, everybody out the gate. Everybody's a pay-per-view star. Roland Romero didn't put no dudes in. He didn't put no dudes in. He didn't run through no gauntlet, no nothing, no dudes, no nothing. And all of a sudden, he's he's talking about pay, being a pay-per-view star. He's talking about pay-per-view numbers. And he ain't never, he, he really ain't did shit in his whole fucking career. Don't get it messed up. I'm not saying that they didn't do shit in their career. But what I'm saying, even if you're an actor, whatever job you got, you have to pay dues before you start making money. See what I'm saying? It ain't just about the number of years you've been in. It's, a, it's about the what you do, how you move up, how you, how you get different positions, how you show your worth to the company. You see what I'm saying? And, and... These motherfuckers, a lot of these motherfuckers' evaluation reports ain't looking good. But everybody keep giving these motherfucking passes. Because the way the game is right now, all you need to do is have a few a, a, a few strategic fights. Because your, your promoter can get you those things. And then all of a sudden, you know what I'm saying, you're looking at a million dollars. 
You know what I'm saying? You're looking at a million dollars because your your promoter got money. He he was able to the fucking finagle his way through the motherfucking thing to get you get you somewhere. Lomachenko. Right? Out of the straight out of the amateurs, they they people people motherfucker jump behind that motherfucker to make him into something. He had a backing. Anyways, y'all, man, like, look, 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 look I'm, I'm going to say it again, man. I don't give a fuck about none of these, these, these promoters and stuff like that. They out there, they, 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 they have a job to do. You know what I'm saying? And some of them, it's, it's, it's some, Al Heyman seems to, to help his fighters out to get to maximize their profit. A lot of these other promoters, it seems like it's make money for the company. And the, and between time, we find one or two dudes that we show real loyalty to. And other than that. It's a wrap. And on that note, shout outs to everybody in the box community and everybody stay sucker free.